Counting all your aces, you ain't winning Your phone book full of numbers, and names All them great decisions keep you jaded You could have found the one, but you won't change So aren't you glad to meet me? Think you should, I'd be glad to meet me If I were you, aren't you glad to meet me? I think you should I make a real good soul Out of you, time and ticking slow Yes, you're overdue, aren't you glad to meet me? I think you should I mean, I really think you should, yeah oh, God, Welcome to Indy. This is probably one of, or arguably one of my favorite cities in all of the United States of America. Uh, I mean, gosh, look at this view. I mean, it's incredible. Look at that. Oil field right there, which I think, I know the Colts are playing in the playoffs, but I don't know if they have the home game. I think it's the Houston Texans that have the home game. Anyways. I'm here for the C conference, which I'm really looking forward to doing. Um, hopefully we'll see some people, may try to record a little bit, we'll see. I don't know what the policies are there as far as recording like this, I don't know. But the main reason why I'm filming is in two days I will be going to a pilgrimage site, a shrine uh, that I'll talk more about in a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to sit and enjoy this amazing view. All right, today is the day, but before I go, I'm gonna go get some lunch. All right, just finished lunch, it was great. Now it's time to head to the pilgrimage site.
Well, I have made it to the shrine of St. Mother Theodore Gerwin. This is a statue of Mother Gerwin. Um, just a little bit about her. She was born in France in the late 1700s. Uh, she had a rough childhood in the sense that by the time she was 15 years old, she lost her older brother, her younger brother, and her father was murdered. But she didn't let that face her when she was 16. She basically took over the family and helped her mother help run the family due helped uh, in the home to provide for her mother and her younger sister if I'm not mistaken and but she always had this vision this dream to be a religious sister and so at the age of 24 after eight years of working for her family her mother gave the blessing to go off and join the Sisters of Providence in France early on she was known as a natural born leader a teacher and just one that had a great sense of who she was and was able to take on a lot of responsibility. She first went to kind of like the poor area of uh, where she was sent and was told to run the school, turn the school around, and just genuinely loved the families. Fast forward uh, to when she was around 40, um, and then she was asked to go out into the woods of Indiana. I'm just outside of Terre Haute, Indiana, and she was asked to start from scratch a mother house, and she was appointed mother superior of that house. Now, a quick note, she suffered with a just chronic illness from the time she entered into uh, the religious order as a novitiate and was always just battling illness. But she didn't let that phase her and she didn't let the, the wildness of America in 1840s phase her. She just got to work right away. She loved this country. Uh, she loved how devout the Catholics were, even in the midst of heavy persecution in the 1840s. She also had to deal with persecution even within the Catholic Church. Uh, the bishop of the diocese at that time uh, didn't see eye to eye, to put it lightly. Um, in fact, near the end of his time as the bishop, um, he ordered the mother to, to submit her resignation. She refused. He locked her away for a little bit of time, but she always trusted in the reliance of God. He eventually resigned, and then the new bishop that came in um, basically blessed her and gave her and the order whatever they needed. She died uh, in the 1800s. Uh, she was brought to the status of a venerable in the 1900s, early 1900s, her case for canonization, but she wasn't even beatified until the 1990s by Pope John Paul II, Saint Pope John Paul II, and then later canonized Pope by Pope Benedict. And the last thing I want to mention about her, and I think this really encapsulates everything of who she was, and something that I really admire is Pope St. John Paul II said in her beatification that she lived perfectly the blend of human and holiness. That she lived a life that was not extraordinary in any sense of the world's extraordinary, but she lived a very human life, but it was one of holiness and of deep spirituality. And so we're all striving to be saints and I know for me sometimes I can get so wrapped up in thinking I have to do these amazing big things and that's not what Mother Gerwin is about. St. Mother Gerwin was you live your life as best as you can and most importantly you love as God intends you to love as best you can for each and every person. St. Mother Gerwin, um, she's buried right in here in the church. I'm going to go uh, pray and uh, kind of shoot around here. Oh, and, and one last thing, just also realize if you live in America, realize how special this is because we don't have too many canonized saints buried in the United States. She's one of a handful of U.S saints that are recognized. I know she's born in France, but she called here in outside of Terre Haute, Indiana, her home. 
um, a place of refuge. You know, at first it was kind of seen as a, just a deserted wasteland, but she just fully embraced it and loved it here. And so we're very fortunate to have her here. So if you are in the Midwest at any point in your life, feel free to stop over here. This is, uh, like I said, just near Terre Haute. Um, just look up uh, Shrine of St. Mother Gurin and it'll come right up. And it's a beautiful campus and I'll show you a little bit more.
back at the hotel. All right, so a lot of amazing things to see there. Uh, some things I like, some things that I love were the church overall. The Shrine of the Immaculate Conception was beautiful. I Just to be honest with all of you, I don't really like that style of crucifix. I wish it was a kind of a normal crucifix and I wish the tabernacle was in the main part of the sanctuary where it ought to be, but besides those two gripes that I have, um, the church itself is gorgeous as you saw, and then uh, the Most Blessed Sacrament Chapel is beautiful. I, I just didn't want to take pictures in there. I just didn't feel right to do that, but it'd just be kind of a tease for all of you to go uh, and see it and pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament there because it is a beautiful, just a, a quaint little chapel. Well, I say quaint in the size, but the stained glass windows and the high altar that's there is just gorgeous. It definitely seems very kind of French inspired, if you will. The grounds are, are beautiful. It's a really big campus. There's, as you saw uh, with some of the aerial footage. And yeah, as you saw, there's a, a beautiful history of the life of St. Mother Gurren as she came to America and starting this order here, helping the school children and the poor. Um, the beautiful life of that saint, uh, again, I won't, I'll keep my own personal thoughts as far as the direction of the order since then, especially in the 20th century. I, I wish, I'll just say, I wish they would still kind of cling to the ideals of what their saint, uh, their patroness uh, did here and what, uh, when it comes to the habit, when it comes to the, the zeal and the faith and just the identity of reaching out for that. Uh, instead of sort of the other path that they've taken. But be that as it may, the sisters were super hospitable, very kind. Uh, they love talking about the saint, about her life, and just giving me pointers of what to make sure and see. And they were just beautiful and, and loving. And I thank them very much for their hospitality. So that'll do it for this episode. Thank y'all so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, please do so. And I can tell you right now that the next couple of videos videos will be getting ready for the March for Life and then the actual March for Life, which I'll probably have several videos for that. Um, but please leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's a place that I ought to go um, and I will do my best to get there. Until next time, God bless y'all.